Welcome to Catalyst, a podcast by DeFacto Community Center Project. Okay, so um, I'm here with, do you care to identify yourself or come up with a fake name? I'd rather remain anonymous. Okay, so we're here with anonymous. <gasps> we're here with anonymous. Um, so we're asking three questions. Um, so for, we're going to turn off the camera between each question because, you know, editing. Um, so first question, um, you know, when you hear the, the word or the term feminist, or feminism like what is that how do you feel about that well I'm really iffy about the word feminism just basically because I think if it isn't intersectional then it ceases to be feminism altogether I believe in complete intersectional feminism okay but would you still consider that term like like so would you say instead of just feminism you would say like intersectional feminism yes I, okay. I believe feminism needs to be intersectional in order for it to be a complete feminism or a gotcha. feminist movement and to be empowering for all yeah and to protect all yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome <laughs> my name is lily lily lavender thanks my thoughts on it, uh, feminism is a really important word to use you know we shouldn't just obviously it's about equality but we can't erase the fact that women are the ones who need to be lifted for everyone to be equal so it's women power first always So go ahead. Alright, uh, my initial thoughts on feminism, when I just hear the word, or someone's talking about it in general, uh, usually like the question comes to my mind, like, what does this person actually think of feminism when it's coming from like an outside perspective? It's like, it, from my experience, it's like usually like a pretty warped view, like recently, of just like women and women first, you know? And um, I don't know, I've experienced that kind of stuff for my whole life, like since I was a little kid, like I, I just grew up with two sisters, I'm the middle child, and my mom, and my dad's usually at work. So I, I feel like I have a good perspective on, on how women work, and I get kind of, I feel demeaned sometimes about my own perspective, because I'm a woman, that's how I'm presented in the world. So, I usually just try to step in with like a, a voice of fairness, I guess. I'm not trying to like impose my opinions on anyone, but just trying to like, see what everyone's thoughts on what mutual subjects are. So it's trying to be a generally nice human. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Jack. Cool. And what feminism means to me is, I think it's something that's really important because, and I think that it gets a lot of bad press in general, just because people think that it's not about equality, people think that it's about some kind of supremacy thing, but it's really not. And it's, I mean, it's easy to kind of get into that mindset. But I think once you really look at how important gender equality really is and every kind of equality really, it's not something that, in the end, it's not some kind of male, like, um, it's not, it's supposed to be anti-male. And even if there, and if there are people who say they're feminists and they say that they're anti-male, then I don't think they're feminists by definition. Sky check, but everybody calls me Leash. Um, and I guess I'm being interviewed about the topic of feminism. So, what do you think of that word? I think it's a great word. I love the word feminism. I know a lot of people that get really turned off when you identify as a feminist. I am not afraid to identify as a feminist, and I really don't care what other people think of it. It's what I think of it. And I think it's about equality and making sure that women and men are on the level playing field as far as, you know, privilege is concerned, opportunity is concerned, and so on and so forth. So, hi, I'm Amanda Sissenstein. This is Catalyst, the de facto community center podcast. I'm already laughing. You're, you're already making me break char character. As <laughs> um, so, tonight's topic, this is episode two of Catalyst, the de facto podcast, um, is Don't Tell Me to Smile, dealing with sexism and male privilege in our social, personal, and professional lives. So basically, like, just our everyday existence, every day, all the time. So first, just a quick update about what de facto is up to. Um, we are gardens um, are in full swing. Uh, we have gardens in five different spots in New Paltz, New York. We're hopefully looking to expand to the other areas at some point. Um, you can go to our Facebook, just New Paltz Food, or New Paltz Food Not Bombs. We have that too. <laughs> New, Paltz, New Paltz de facto Community Center Project. Um, to find out more details about all of these things I'm about to talk about. Um, but we've got parsley, salad, turnips, peas, summer squash, garlic, 
strawberries in some spots. Um, not all of that's going to be available by the time this is finished editing. Um, but there'll be tomatoes soon. We're going to have some greens soon. Um, so those gardens are for anybody and everybody to help themselves. So if you are near one or past one on a regular basis, feel free to help yourself. We also have free little community libraries in a couple of spots in New Paltz as well. Um, that we just fill with donated books um, for anyone to take and give and take, give a book, give, give a book, take a book. It's a little hot in here, so our brains are melting, so <laughs> bear with us. Um, so busking is next. Um, we're gonna get some thematically appropriate socio-political songs, both covers and if anyone wants to write originals or has originals, for your listening pleasure will be coming soon. Um, and that's, we're going to be busking to raise money for our long-term goal, which is to establish a multi-purpose, multi-functional multi community center in or very close to New Paltz, New York. Um, see, there's going to be info below where this video is posted for more information with our contact information, our GoFundMe link, and any other pertinent information. Um, we're also selling our right here at the People's Apothecary, 430 Main Street in Rosendale. It's a bookstore, cafe, apothecary. Um, this is where we're filming. They are kindly allowing us to film here. Um, so some of these items here that are all like shiny and stuff on the table are items that uh, people have handcrafted and donated for a de facto community center project. So all the proceeds from the sale of these items, and this is just a sampling, that are available right here at the People's, Apo the People's Cauldron. Uh, I think I said the People's Apothecary first. Yeah. But anyway, the People's Cauldron Apothecary Bookstore and Cafe. Um, all of these things are available here in addition to other items and all of the proceeds go towards de facto's projects and our future community center. Um, so now that I've gone through that really quickly, um, I'm going to kind of like allow you all to introduce yourselves and whatever information you feel like sharing about yourself uh, before we kind of get started into the general topic. So starting with me. Starting with you. I'm starting, starting next to you. That's pretty okay. much. <laughs> Rebecca Rotzler, uh, resident of New Paltz. I'm originally from Alaska, Native American, and I get a lot of odd things that happen to me because um, I feel that a lot of men assume that I'm from someplace else and don't speak English or understand English, which is very frustrating. Um, with that, one of the things that I really think is important for all parents to start with is how they raise their infants. Um, <clears throat> I have a son, and when I was pregnant, I didn't want to know what gender this child was going to be. I didn't care what his appendices would look like. I didn't care, you know, what, what he was going to come out as. And I basically didn't do the pink and blue thing. Green and yellow were fine. Um, so when he was born, it was like, oh, okay, this is, he's got that thing, you know, fine. <laughs> okay, now I know. And throughout his life, I really kept that up. Um, he would play with a doll. He had a baby doll that sat on the table with dinner with us. And I would get criticized by different men because of what he was doing. And my comment would be, well, he might be a father someday. He's got to learn how to do this stuff. But um, with that, um, in conversations, I don't use the typical pronouns. Um, our friend Chelsea <laughs> was on a chat that we had. And she gets asked, why don't you hang out with more girls? She's in her 20s, and she's very aware. And basically, it's the pronoun thing. She hangs out with people. It doesn't matter what other assignment these people have. But it, it, it's just something that I, um, I carry with me every day, and I, I make it a, a big point to converse that way and bring that out to other people parents and that's basically where I come from and that's that's me <laughs> <laughs> well I'm Margaret Human and I think I'm on this panel because I'm 75 <laughs> and I grew up in the 40s and 50s and lived through as a young mother the feminist 
first awakening of the 20s, like the 60s, in 1920. <laughs> you know, the patriarchy that starts with, why won't you just give me a smile? 
um, was I was walking home from work one night, um, so it was right before, you know, the sun starts setting around 9, so it wasn't even that late, it was like 9.20, right, you know, and suddenly it became like the most dangerous, you know, night ever, um, when two men, um, I guess I didn't see them, but they saw me, how would they have known if I was smiling or not? Basically, followed me all the way home, asking me to give them a smile, it escalated, it got it got so worse like they got really really mean like awful and abrasive um and yeah how they even know and i still go back to that moment like how they know if i was smiling or not like i literally like walked out of the woods you know out of like the pit in town <laughs> um it was dark out you know like there's no way they would have known if by my demeanor that i wasn't skipping home or you know anything <laughs> skipping home like you do. Because I remember being in a pretty good mood until that happened. And I was like, fuck this, sorry. No, it's honestly, it's YouTube. I don't really know what the rules are, but. No rules. No rules. But, no rules. So, so, like, yeah. but I like. Yeah. <laughs> so, one thing I really want to talk about, um, especially for someone like me, is having to deal with that type of behavior when you were stuck in a situation where you were literally at work. Yeah. And for me, I've worked in customer service for so long that I know how to go about handling situations of, you know, people being misogynistic or homophobic or whatever without, you know, them, they, they usually end up knowing that they messed up and that I'm calling them out they messed up. Um, last week I was at work and I was outside um, having a cigarette, sorry mom, and um, these, this, this like gaggle, I mean like 35 like men in like blue collar men like button down suits and like all white men not like all of them whatever um i was outside and uh one guy got out of, got out of his, his car and then another guy got out of his car and the one guy was like hey no lesbians here ha 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 and i was going to the door and i was like excuse me and he was like oh, oh i was making a joke to my friend and i was like yeah well i'm queer and that's not funny at all <laughs> and he was just dumbfounded so i turned i turned back around and went inside and then he comes inside and he's like waiting for me until i'm finished like having a customer and he's just like i just want to apologize i meant no offense to the lgbt community i'm like if you meant no offense you wouldn't have said it you're just saying that because you got caught and i right. called you out and i was just like it's okay like no problem my my defensive mechanism sometimes is just smile and no like just make it feel like you're stupid like i mean that's not the right way to go about it but when I'm at work and I have things yes. to do and I'm helping people, yeah. I'm like, get out of time for this nonsense. I, yeah. I called you out, That's let it be. And then later that night, he was leaving, and I was talking to one of my other coworkers, and uh, I felt a hand on the small of my back. Oh, and I was God. like, okay, I have two options here. <laughs> it's either a coworker, or fr- or, or coworker, slash, coworker slash friend, or it's some sleazeball asshole. Oh. And I turned around, it was him. And he's like, I just want to apologize again. I'm like, oh okay, God. here's the thing, buddy. Oh my God. I took his arm and I did like that. <laughs> here's the thing, buddy. You can apologize to people without touching them. Mm-hmm. Have a great night. Get the hell out. Like, get out. Oh my God. The end. And pretty much, I, I don't know. I just, I don't put up with it in any regards, in any situation in my life, work, school, home, whatever, I just don't, I don't have time for it. It's, it's, it's my entirety, it's who I am, and I just don't, I don't have, I don't have time for it. <laughs> I'm glad I haven't been fired yet, but it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's also because I have great employers who also know that that's not okay, you stood up for yourself, and you didn't get the right, so. That's wrong for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, just a quickie on that, I didn't think about this, but. I very often will go and get a bowl of soup or something and work, like at a bar, you know, like PNGs and nipples. And there's a guy who I had met and he bought me a drink once. Thank you, very nice, whatever. So he comes over and he's, you know, and I was like, excuse me, why are you touching me? You know, why? 
I have never given you any indication that it's okay. And even if he did give some type of indication of a simple yes or no, it's still not okay. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So he he went, he went uh, and ran away. But, um, but it, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Like there, no one has the right to do that. Don't exactly. you know if you smile at someone that means that you want to like do it? No, that's exactly, and that's, that's so un, kind of, and then you started to touch on this too, but like part of the underlying grossness of that, like we all know it doesn't make us feel good, but it's like sometimes you have to really think about it to understand why, like why does mm. this make me feel gross, like why does that make me feel like, like, you know, just like icky inside, and it's because they're asking something of you. That they have no right to ask of you. Mm -hmm. there's, there's somebody who don't they don't know you. And it, and here's the thing, like sometimes people like think maybe you, you look sad, and maybe it's like you know like a, a grandma who's like, oh honey, like smile, you okay? You know that's a very different thing than a, a person you, that you don't know, because they're asking you to smile not for you so that you feel good and happy. They're asking you to smile because they want you yeah. to make them yeah. feel good. Yeah. And especially when that's, and, and it's, it's almost always a male to a female, oh, yes. often behind the counter. Um, yes. I kind of want to rework work that Pearl Jam song, like old lady behind a counter in a small town, but like, like young female, like being demanded to smile behind a counter. So I don't know, anyway, I'll work on that one. Um, but you know, it's, it's, they're asking, and, and the other half of that too is that I've looked up studies about this. And men often think and are conditioned to think because you know we don't want to put all this like blame on men and not on just how our society, society is built. Like, because you know. again, like if you're raising your children, as as Rebecca was talking about, and imposing those gender norms, like well, that's that's what they're going to grow up thinking. And and those are you know, so we can't just be like, oh, men are horrible, and we should just punch them all in the face. Um, no, like we need to examine this as a societal problem that we all, including mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and aunts and neighbors and friends, like we all need to take responsibility for this. Um, and I totally just lost my point. What was I saying? No, <laughs> saying there's that. A study. Yeah, a, that, that there's a study. That oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that there's yeah, a study showing that that males tend to interpret smiles as sexual invitations. So when they see a young woman or a woman of whatever age smiling at them, they they take that as, oh, it's on, yeah? Yeah, I get a cup of coffee, <laughs> you know? like, <laughs> And that's a part of the other reason why it's so not okay. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that was my bit. So, um, I said before that I'm from Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica. Speak up, speak up. I, so, um, I'm gonna also say something that's not very popular, but I don't like men. And I know it's horrible to say, but I don't like men. The reason for not liking men is very personal, but a lot of it has to do with where I'm from and where I'm born. Mm -hmm. So walking the street, a man will grab your hand or grab your wrist as a form of your attention or will call, call out to you, will touch you in perfect manners as a way to get your attention and as a cultural norm. Yeah. So growing up as a child, men would grab, men who are way older me would reach out and grab my hand as a way to stop me to get my attention to speak to them. And I'd find that to be very disgusting and revolting. So as I got older, I realized I don't like men. Like, it's just something like that. Yeah, it's an embedded thing. It's an embedded thing. You grew up with that. It's like, an embedded thing in the culture yeah. in the Caribbean. A lot of things that, um, it's a culture that represses women, represses our education, our sexuality, just us in general. It's a way to appease men. A strong woman is not some, the whole trope of a strong black, black woman, we all know it, but a strong black woman in the Caribbean is more like a woman who stays home and raises your children as you go out and do all the shit that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. That's what a strong black woman is to a lot of these men. It's not a woman who, who's educated. I mean, that is part of it, but a strong black woman that I've seen growing up are women who raise the children, don't question their husbands, and are just meant to be subservient to men. And that is a cultural norm in the Caribbean. And also goes to why I don't like men. But men are raised to believe that women is your property. You can go out, have kids with her, leave her up to someone else, she'll raise the kids. The, um, in the New York Times, an opinion piece about 11 year old and like this was happening and like, you know, concurrently, like 4,000 child marriages, um, the majority, like overwhelming, like over 85% of them, like in New York State, um, you know, were a much, much, much older man with like a much, you know, 14 or younger, you know, um, female and stuff. And that was a struggle. So we're dealing with that kind of, um, you know, women as 
property, like the economy of like of our bodies, like everywhere, definitely. Yeah. And, and and with that, it's the parents. Yes. You know, it's the parents. The parents so do the can yes. make that so decision. Yeah. That's it doesn't matter what our laws are in terms of rape, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> if the parents give the okay, it's okay. Yeah. You know, but yeah. It's like in uh, communities or um, tribal communities, uh, a lot of the times, like grandma and grandpa are still around, you know, and, and they're the ones who kind of, you know, if that's not okay, there's going to be some punishment. Like, and it's not like you can s s what is it, weasel your way out of something like a jail sentence, which is. You know, if you murder or rape someone, you should probably be behind bars or thinking about your actions instead of continuing on with that. Which is like, your if you have no parents or something, I mean, sure, you can be what is it, considerate and enough to like take account for that and um, maybe not say stuff that are offensive, but it's too offensive or anything. That's why I think. With me, I'm mostly kind of, it might be something internalized where I'm very like submissive, or not really submissive, but I don't like to confront anyone about, I don't know, anything. <laughs> I just kind of go about my way, and if something does something really terrible, then that's when I can call them out or something. It's like, that's really not a pain no matter what. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's just internalized things that come out and we don't notice them. So like I, I smile a lot at the customers that I come into my shop and stuff. Like I'm just a people pleaser. I think that's my nature. But um, really trying to cut it back because it feels just feels gross. It feels like you're giving in. Yeah. 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 Like unintentionally you don't want to give in but it's just like what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been smiling a lot less. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I will give you a yeah. reason to smile or smile when you feel good, yeah. you know, and exactly. fuck the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I feel like a, a big part of it too is like, even if someone isn't outrightly, like the fact that like you're smiling without like someone like actually asking you to smile, it's like within ourselves we have these thoughts because they've been trained into us from our societal like standards that like this is what I have to be like because I'm in this type of body with these organs. Yes. That's very annoying. And like, um, to go back a little bit to like, like, just men touching like female body people, like, they feel this entitlement to our bodies. And it's like, uh, that is like trained into them. So yes. to a certain extent, like Amanda was completely right, like a lot of this, like all of this stuff is just stuff that we've constructed and it can be deconstructed through mm -hmm. education and stuff like that. But at a certain point, you need to take responsibility exactly. for your own actions. Mm -hmm. So it's not my job to teach you how to treat people with respect. Um, and if I have to do that all the time, at a certain point, I'm gonna get tired of yeah. it. And um, yeah, I'm all for educating people as much as possible, and then to a certain extent, like, get with the program. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's just, a, it's just a matter of carelessness, that's what it is. It's like, these people have the ability to to, to unlearn all the internalized we things. Exactly. We did. We're trying. You know, yeah. all my other cisgender straight male friends have unlearned that, you know. And even sometimes when they're set by the line, I'm like, yo, yeah. check yourself, you know. And I kind of, I have to, yeah, sorry, no, no, it's fine. Um, I kind of, when situations like that occur, when I'm dealing with a difficult straight male, um, um, I kind of have to like stop and just like, I don't want to give them a little grace, but I just try to come from a place of understanding that like, it's hard. I try to come from a place of understanding, but I also come from a place of, you are a grown ass adult. <laughs> this is yeah. 2017, get your fucking shit together and get with the times. Yeah. Like, yeah. so it's yeah. like, I, I battle myself with. Yeah. If it's uh, the day, yeah. whatever day you catch me on is the day exactly. you're going to yeah. yeah. educated or yeah. you're going to get screamed at. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I've also worked in retail and again, going back to the whole being Native American, everyone assuming that I'm from someplace else. I've, I've been at protests where people, people have screamed at me, 
go back to your own country. And it's like, this is my country. You know, it's love. like seriously, I've it's had my that happen. I'm like, where do you want me to go? This is my country. But so sorry that happened. You know, and it, and and the thing is, it's like, um, I've had men come into a store where I'm working, and because of the language I use, they're like, oh. You know what you're talking about. Hello, why am I working here? Yeah, you know, right? yeah. it's like, yeah. And, and then I get the, oh, you speak great English, mm -hmm. right? Really? Yes, yes. And then the, the one thing that I put on my little notes last week, I left left my um, friend's house. Um, and there are construction workers right across the street. I was waiting for the bus. Five of them. One was operating a piece of equipment. The other guy was guiding him. Three other guys standing there. Standing there. And I hate, I hate the stigma that construction workers get. Yes. But very often, right? So the three guys standing there watching. The shortest one, and I and I have to say, the shortest one, um, sees me across the street, right across the street. And he says to one of the other guys, oh, is that the woman who gave you a massage last night? Oh. As if I'm a sex worker, which nothing against sex workers, but he's saying it loud enough for me to hear. Assuming that either I wasn't gonna, I was gonna ignore it or, or, or I didn't understand what he was saying because how could I possibly speak English? So, <laughs> I just, I, I heard it, and it was the ha-ha-has, the ha-ha-has. And I'm like, the woman who gave you a massage last night, I'm the only woman that I can see for a mile. <laughs> so I just yelled over at him, compensation, <laughs> as in penis, and I, I know he understood. I'm like, you're the shortest guy on this crew, you know? And, and, and also, I always get it because I'm small, you know, so it's like all these different things, you know, my color, my skin, and everything else. So he just looked at me, and they all just looked at me, and they shut up. They shut up when you call them out. It's yes. amazing. Right? Oh my God. And it's yeah. like, oh. we have to do that. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take your, you know, it, it's it's so many isms on so many different levels, yeah. and it's like I'm sorry, I'm gonna ism you out, you know, yeah. compensation. Like, see ya, and I just I started walking, and I went to a different spot to catch the bus. Oh it was just like I don't I shouldn't ha I should not have done that, but at the same time I was so angry. It was just like when Rebecca God. first. Oh. Go ahead. When Rebecca first told me this story, I was just like, that's, that's, that's all the isms. It's yes. all the isms. <laughs> I was like, oh, how did they do that in such a short time? Yeah, how many can so, you fit in? Um, I, wait, can I just, oh, just yeah. to piggyback real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is so awesome. I've been thinking about it since you first shared that story. Mm -hmm. You know, just like that challenge of like a one word response. Because like, if I, like, if I spend all this time, and I feel like maybe we might all feel the same way, if we spend all this time like unpacking all these problems and right. always calling people out, like we literally would not have lives. Yes. You know? Yes. But like that one word challenge, like shut it down in, in one word. And I've really been thinking space. about that. <laughs> you know? Like it was effective and you were able to move on so much quicker than if you got into like, you know, a dialogue. A, a, a real dialogue, yeah. That's I actually a perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay, so you actually remind me of my biggest pet peeve of going out. It's um, so I'm sure we've all done it, gone to P and Gs or whatever, which I hate going to anymore because um, every time I go there, a guy will always come to me and tap me on the shoulder and say, "Hey, do you date white guys?" Without a fail, a guy will always come up to me and ask me that question. Without fail. And I always, you know, I used to just walk away, but now I always make the point to address it to them, always. I'm like, that is ridiculous for you to ask me that question. Like, one, I grew up in Utah. No, 
obviously I've had sex. I mean, I live in Utah, so obviously I sleep with white men. Like, what am I supposed to do? Just like, like never what have What else that. do you have? Like, yeah. is there something else in this town for me to like do? <laughs> no, I'm no, there's no option. So yes, I do sleep with white men, just not you. And it's just like, oh, without fail. It, oh. I know, and it's horrible because it's so easy. I have so many dietary restrictions. It's the easiest place for you to eat. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. They have big sweet potatoes. You know, it's oh. like they don't eat greens. <laughs> in a minute um but those that was all like a perfect segue to my little conclusion before this break which was and Steph you, you touched on this too but like if the burden is always on us yes. even though it's their <coughs> behavior that needs to change and again we do as 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 humans in our culture we do all share a bit of the blame we do share all a bit of the burden but the shift of the burden onto us is a bit disproportionate yeah. and by a bit I mean like ridiculously disproportionate um, and it's and it's hard because again that burden is still on us because we want to make allies and accomplices not enemies and we don't want to alienate people we don't want to make them angry and defensive we want we want them to be like oh I get it now and now I'm gonna check my dude friend when he gets out of line or you know what I mean so we need we need to multiply our accomplices and our allies and and find because like not we're not it's not gonna be successful, successful with every person some people are just not ever going to get it in their lifetime. But when we when we do find those people who are like, oh, I get it now. Because, like, look, I'm not perfect either. Like, I'm a white girl. I was raised in a, in a community that was predominantly white. Like, you know, I've definitely said some stupid ass ignorant shit in my life. You know, and luckily I had, like, good friends who were like, yo, Amanda. Like, and I was like, oh, that probably should have been <laughs> obvious to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Taking off the white privilege glasses. So sorry, you know, so like, you know, we, none of us are perfect and I'm still probably gonna need to be corrected many times throughout my life. Cause you know, I mean, as much as I try to be like hyper aware of things, like, you know, um, but like, I'm a kind of person who's like, oh yeah, oops, sorry, yeah. You know, so there's a lot of people out there and if we can get through to them and turn them into allies as opposed to enemies, and again, it's not gonna work with everyone. I don't know if those construction workers are now gonna also be like super feminist and marching like them. They're probably not, but you know, maybe we planted a seed. But you know, it's it's but that is something that we can do in our one on one interactions, even though again it's totally wrong that that burden should be completely on us. But as things are, but if we can if we can get more men kind of like uh, and get them to understand these things and get them to not only check their behavior but then maybe even take that next step to check other people's behavior again in ways that like doesn't alienate, 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 alienate people but brings them into the fold and and sends them out into the the world with the right tools to confront these things when they see it is great it's kind of like part of what we're doing tonight so we're going to take a quick break so we can all like basically pour water over our heads it's really hot in here it's getting hot in here but we have to keep on our clothes because well i guess if we youtube there's no rules so do whatever you want i don't rule no rule all right we'll be back in a second cool. Next question. Um, have you ever dealt with um, or experienced kind of male privilege or sexism in the workplace, social life, pretty much any component of your life? And, you know, how did you deal with that or, you know, what would you like to share about that? Can I roll 
Well, I grew up in a really traditional family where um, after dinner was served, you know, the, the women served the dinner, the men after dinner went and laid down and the women were supposed to wash dishes. So I was instilled those, um, those, how do you uh, values. explain it? Those values and morals in my head since, you know, since I was a kid. But I never liked them. I always thought they were really unfair. And, um, Sorry, I just saw a huge splash of water. That's, Sorry. That's anyway, right. continue. That's okay. Um, I always thought they were really unfair. I was actually really a rebellious child anyway. I was a tomboy. I'm actually known by Mary, but yes, yes. Um, I grew up a tomboy. And um, I grew up and I just started making sense of things. I received a lot of sexism in the workplace. You know, uh, men making crude and rude jokes at me. You know, men joking about other women's breasts. Or, or body parts in front of me, making me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not allowed to say anything about it, otherwise I sound like a prude bitch, or, you know, or I'm the crazy one, they gaslight you. Yes. So I think every time a woman defends herself, a man, a man comes along and really, it's really cis men that come along and, and, and they try and, you know, gaslight a woman and make her feel crazy just, be, just for being a woman and trying to stick up for herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, that was released. No, that was awesome. Um, okay, so when I was younger, obviously I was influenced by a lot of the things in society that say that women are supposed to be small and keep to themselves and not make trouble. And since living in New Paltz the past two years and being an adult, I don't take shit like at all. Like I've gotten so good at telling men off when they want to make me feel like I should just be docile and reticent and go along with what they're telling me a man actually snapped to me and like grabbed my arm and said I'm gonna buy you a drink and I just got out of it I was like you don't touch my person first off because you don't know me I'm getting too animated but yeah oh, it's, it's important to know yourself enough to be that kind of confident yeah that's one of the things that you know in the discussion portion of the podcast mm -hmm. um, it we talk about the fact that like you don't you you don't get to just touch a woman like that's no. not okay, and that it's okay for a woman to be angry if some guy, without permission, like grabs her or touches her. Yeah. That it's okay to be angry about that, and it's okay to confront someone about that oh, because course. your body is your own, and unless they like know you and know that they have permission to touch you, like hug you or whatever, then it's not okay. Yeah, absolutely. we actually had a, a yelling, "It's not okay!" A little thing. Yeah. Now I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's recording in my, in, my, <laughs> in my social life, I tend not to see so much of that, but. I tend to not hang out with so many people, you know, so I just, I hang out with a lot of nice people, and my friends don't usually uh, commit sexism, as, as I've seen so far, but in the workplace, it's a like very different story, because I've just worked in kitchens my whole life, you know, right. so it's like, you know, the, the back of the house, front of the house, like, dynamic, and it's always, you know, like, usually, like, attractive women, and they're just, like, roughy men, like, in the back. And then there's like the in between people who are like, what the fuck is this dynamic? I'm sorry, of course. Oh, no, but, we, um, no, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's too cute. Um, but then I've worked at places where it's just, and it's a completely different feeling when there's none of that stigma towards like, oh, this gender does this, this gender does that. Like I worked at, um, at Tavolo, and it was like a, like a very manly kitchen. The, the chef was like, just a big, rocky dude, he was really bossy, but he was a good guy. And then all of a sudden it switched, and the owner was a woman who was uh, managing the front of the house and then out of nowhere the, the head chef was a woman and the, I don't know the dynamic in the kitchen was just so much more like clean and efficient for having like this balance of people um, I don't know so I just noticed that but then I noticed like a, lo a lot of like older people they just don't like to have women like cooking or which any, is hilarious, right? And then the other half people are like, get in the kitchen, and then, and then make me a sandwich. At home, yeah, then, exactly. It's, it's and then the other people are like, you don't belong in the kitchen because you're a woman. Yeah. Like, well, we don't know what we're supposed to do. Are we supposed to be in the kitchen? Are we not supposed yeah. to be in the kitchen? Yeah. I've yeah. definitely noticed a lot of dysfunctionality when there's, like, this sexist presence in a workplace. Yeah, well, that's service. why feminism is good for all because yeah. I agree, like, work situations where it's been males and females like all, I feel it's, just, it's so it's like, much better yeah, it's just when it's all women like there's issues with that and yeah, that can be really men, annoying it's, it's exactly because I worked literally yeah. my last job or my current job but last year 
I was literally the only woman on the farm out of like so many people, of so many men. And some were wonderful, some were challenging, but like now it's much more mixed and honestly everything yeah. is better. I really do think that men and women together make a much better workplace. Yeah. Um, Part of this uh, activism group called Students for Sensible Drug Policy that tries to like end the war on drugs and criminal justice stuff. And we have like a, you know, a board of like representatives that we elect. We like go to like the conference and elect people and they're, um, there were, I guess, I'd say there were about equal number of women and men running, but I guess I just, uh, I mean, in the end, it was still, I think, kind of a popularity contest, and I think that kind of just, um, in the end, a lot of men were elected, even though, because the, the thing about SSDP, it's a very activist kind of environment that's very, um, uh, supposed to be, you know, advocating for people who are marginalized by crime and things like that, and by the war on drugs, and also, it's supposed to be very intersectional, but even though that was still kind of an activist setting, there was definitely still an element of definitely male privilege there, because uh, it was mostly uh, males that got elected, even though it's, you know, totally democratic, and it was the people who are, like, uh, representing, you know, their chapters going there, it still seemed like there was still an element there that wasn't good. Do you feel like that was, like, that people just have, like, even women kind of have this indoctrinated notion of that, like, men are just better at being in charge of things, or do you think that was... What was going on? Like, how yeah, were there roughly ways. half and half women, men, blah, 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 women and men, like voting for these positions? I think it made it harder for the women to kind of, like, um, I guess, present themselves, just because there was already kind of a. You know, I guess we're in a way it's like a cultural programming to not see women in leadership positions subconsciously. Right. So it's something that, you know, a lot of people still probably did get it and vote for the women. But I guess there was still like in the end, like when you just kind of play the numbers out, it doesn't yeah. work out that way. Interesting. Like we got our first black president before our first women president. Not that I wanted it to be Hillary. I didn't. <laughs> um, and I and I love Susan Sarandon's response where she was like, "I am insulted that you think I would vote for." For Hillary Clinton just because she's a woman. Well, like I don't consider anything else but gender when I'm voting. Like, come on. Um, anyway, side. That was a side. <laughs> that was a tangent. Um, to talk about sexism in the field of work that I'm in. I work in IT, which is a very male-dominated field. And at my job, I've experienced quite a bit of sexism. Not so much from my coworkers, but more so on the phone. Um, I've had men treat me like I was the department secretary. I've had men get on the phone and when they weren't satisfied with the answer that I gave them, even though it was the correct answer, they would ask for me to put a male coworker on the phone. I had a customer get on the phone with me one time and the first words out of his mouth, and can I curse? Oh yeah. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> were great. Now I have to deal with a stupid fucking woman. You can imagine how that call went. Um, I had... Another customer say to me, um, basically he, again, did, didn't want to, he didn't want to give me any information about his account, even though I could have solved the problem in five minutes. Um, so, you know, at the end he's not cooperating and finally I said, all right, you, you know, if that's the way you want to go, then we'll get a technician out to your house. Um, and he goes, you know, I just want you to know something. I've worked with thousands of customer service representatives over the years, and you're a very arrogant woman. And so I got very sarcastic. <laughs> and I said, you know what, sir, you're right. I am an arrogant woman, and I want to thank you for educating me on the errors of my ways. <laughs> and I'll make sure not to be so much of an arrogant woman in the, in the future. And he hung up the phone, um, and they get a survey afterwards. Of course, he gave me a crap survey, and uh, my supervisor, who was male, uh, pulled me aside about the survey and tried to very delicately say that there was a different way I could have handled that, and I said, no, no, you are not a woman who works in this field. You don't deal with what I, what I do day in and day out. And then, I guess, one more that's, that's funny is um, I had a customer the other day who couldn't reach a particular website. I work for an ISP, just to get that out there. Um, and uh, internet service provider. Oh, oh, so, uh, yeah, I know. Um, he couldn't reach a particular website, so I was trying to explain to him why he couldn't reach the website at that time and why it wasn't our fault, and I used a car analogy to explain it to him. So he finally understands, he gets it, he goes, that's all well and good. He's like, but I have one more question for you. If I was a woman, how would you have explained that to me? 
and completely deadpan without skipping a beat, I said, the same exact way, sir, because women also drive, believe it or not. <laughs> and he hung up the phone. <laughs> so... Well, I would have been like, when you go shopping at the mall, and... <laughs> It's good times. Oh yeah, it's then it's, 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 it's yeah, taking up the space with just like their voice when they have no part in that conversation mm -hmm. as something to add to it. Yeah, they have nothing to add to it. Yeah, exactly. They just want to talk. Yeah, they repeat they things yeah. that you've already said. They make and like, they're so they're very idea, like it's their idea. Yeah, yeah. they talk about their stupid. Yeah, like if they it's like explaining stuff that you already know. Yeah, that you could be expected to know. It's just yeah. like, why are you talking? When Do you know the sky is not actually blue and neither is the ocean? It's just a reflection of light. From <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Right? I went through fifth grade just like you did. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's like, how to use a pen when you're at like activist meetings. And, like, you're, <laughs> oh, and you're, no, no, like, you're like, like, you're like writing and they're like, I don't know, honey, 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 hon
and I offered to pour him a little light roast so he could pair it, just, you know, taste or maybe he'd like it better. Um, he said, I don't want this one. Give me a light roast instead. So I dumped the coffee out, poured him a light roast, and said that'll be a dollar. That's how much a refill is, a dollar. Um, so he, like, immediately was, like, refusing to pay. And he was like, what do you mean? What do you mean it's a dollar? I'm like, well, it's a refill's a dollar. Like, you already purchased a coffee, so any coffee you purchase after this is only a dollar. And, you know, I was very, you know, polite and, you know, do, just like I'm talking right now. You gave him what he asked for. I gave him what he asked for, exactly. And he was, he was, he then tried to refuse to pay, so I'm like, all right, well, you can't have the coffee then. So I took the coffee back. And then he proceeded to reach his hand into my tip jar. <gasps> oh! So that's when I was like, oh, okay, not being polite anymore. So I grab it, and I'm like, no. No, not okay. No, and he's like, I was no. just taking back the tip I gave you. So I plucked out a dollar and I gave it back to him. Like, here's your tip that you gave me. Go on your merry way. Like, look, you clearly don't like our coffee, so you're free to go somewhere else. But I'm not going to give you just, you don't get to, like, not pay for something because you didn't like it. That's, like, not how food service works. So, <laughs> hold that thought, hold that thought. So, um... Uh, at, at some point, I guess, like, they left, or I don't really remember. Oh, he was with a woman. I don't know if it was, like, wife, girlfriend, cousin, I don't know, sister, who knows. But once, oh, no, wait, that's a different story. Never mind, lies. So, um, <laughs> so, so that was what really happened. Um, this is the Yelp review. Horrible coffee, bad moldy smell, worst service ever. Enjoy. I was drawn in by the size and atmosphere of the cafe, but immediately smelled the mildew of the chairs, etc. which is actually true but you know not my problem it wasn't my job I, I noticed the only employee sitting in the behind, idly behind the bar and she seemed generally disgruntled ultimately annoyed to have to get up to help me not true uh my coffee was beyond me disgruntled? well yes but only when i'm like dealing with sexism and male privilege <laughs> that i get very disgruntled but uh <laughs> my coffee was way beyond weak i returned to the counter to ask for a fresh cup it was not fresh and let her know the obvious problem she spilled out my cup in the sink, and as she poured a new one, told me it would be a dollar refill. Excla exclamation question mark. Oh. Uh, <laughs> protested, but she was unrelenting. Then she refused to give a refund. Final sale. Not authorized to give refunds. Which is true. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> chaos ensued. Chaos ensued. Chaos. She was insane. Beyond worse most host hostile person I've ever met in food service. <laughs> oh Psycho. God. What the fuck? Oh, that's great. Do yourself a favor. Do not go here. Yo, that is so bad. Yeah. Oh, and right. that was the more mild one. So <laughs> I, I just have two more. Just two more. So, um... So oh my god. <laughs> so this one I might actually read backwards. Just because it's fine. So I'm going to start with the Yelp review and go into what happened because I realized that I quoted what he said, so anyway. So, I just came from meeting at the Bistro, one of the best businesses in town, I will not deny that, Bistro is awesome, um, and was on my way to sit down and study with a drink at the cafeteria. As far as the business goes, I've heard some shady things with cleanliness, but that is hearsay. What I know of exactly is that the employee behind the counter, not so attractive girl with curly black hair and glasses, <laughs> Uh, One thing is brown, oh, no. Mofo. It's brown. That it is, is brown so hair. Horrible. And yes, I have curly hair and glasses. Um, not so attractive. So clearly, this is about my my customer service skills, and not about the fact that I'm a woman and he's a man. Clearly, oh, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Was the rudest woman I've ever come across dealing with a customer. When I tried to be friendly with her, she gave me an attitude of "What are you doing in here?" It was if I just because I didn't fit the new Paul style, and I'm basically what? a clean cut Newport guy. Style. No that I shouldn't be in there in the first place. Well, after she threw my change into my hand and then stormed off, I let her have it. This woman should not be in the business of dealing with customers if she doesn't know how to be friendly and courteous. I think is what he was talking about. By friendly. She didn't call me behind the counter. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend this place to anyone. <clears throat> when I tr so this is me now. When I tried to be friendly with her, like, okay, just the way he even worded that just totally gave away the fact that, like, he was more than just being friendly. Exactly. He was trying to get friendly. First, when he was in line, ahead of him was a woman with a 10-year-old daughter. He was attempting to flirt with her and tried to coerce her into letting him oh buy her coffee. The woman was clearly uncomfortable, so I rushed through her order to get her away from him. When you don't succeed, try, try again. So then he moved on to me. 
I made his order, made small talk while I made his coffee, took his money, then got back to work. I had coffee that needed to be brewed, a sink full of dishes, counters needed to be wiped off, etc. Instead of taking his order and moving on, he continued to hang out by the register and attempted to flirt with me. I gave polite but brief responses because I was clearly busy. At one point, he asked if I was happy. A very personal question to ask a stranger, but I had a suspicion of where he was going with this. So I said, yes, but very busy, and started to list all of the things I had to do behind the counter. He ignored that and proceeded to say I wasn't very friendly. I again repeated that I was very busy. He then either called me a bitch or a cunt. I forget what he called me both. I don't remember which was first. He called me both at different moments. I told him he was being very rude. He then called me again a bitch or a cunt. I told him he had to leave. He then took the full drink he had ordered, poured it over the counter, and then shook it to get it behind the counter on the floor. And then I told him to get the fuck out. And my, all my regular customers like came like swooping to the counter and they're like, oh my god, are you okay? What the hell just happened? Are you all right? Um, yeah, so there was that guy. What a child. I know. Um, and clearly a happy, friendly person behaves that way. Mm-hmm. Like takes his drink and pours yeah. it all over the counter. Clearly. Yeah, it would have been a girl. Like this. Then went to yelp and complain. Yeah. Exactly. And this is what about me. Exactly. And of course had to say that I was not so attractive. Just yeah. had to oh, you know, just to add that. He wasn't hitting on you because you're yeah. attractive. So, <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, All right, so a man. This is the last one, and then we're gonna get back into discussion. We're gonna try to answer my that one, the, the, my friend's question about maleism. <laughs> Should be also fun. Um, so what? Uh, what really happened was a man and his wife slash girlfriend date sister cousin. I'm not sure. Walked up to the counter. I said, "What can I get you?" The man speaks first. Keep in mind that he's not smiling at all. He didn't say hi, how are you, or anything. I forget his specific drink order, but he came up to the counter and said with a completely straight face, no smile, and said, could I have a medium latte and a smile? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I looked at him. Yeah, one of those. I was looking at the register screen, because we had like one of those touch screen things. So I was like looking for his order, whatever, to push the button. Um, so I looked up at him with an equally straight face and said, I don't smile on command. Not in my job description, but I will have your latte in just a minute. Okay. Then I look at the woman he was with and asked if she wanted anything. She was very polite and said she didn't want anything. It seemed a bit irritated with dude friends she was with. And then walked away and left him to his own devices. <sighs> Made his order, handed him his drink, and told him the cost. He was a bit deflated at this point. His little joke backfired. He said something about the along the lines of, I'm a nice guy, you know. Which, of course, if you are a nice guy, then you don't have to say I'm a nice guy. So, yeah. uh, I'm sure, I said, I'm sure you are but I don't know you and I don't smile for strangers on command. And then my friends were also kind of visiting me at the cafe. So I could, I'll, at this point I kind of see them giggling because like they're overhearing this whole thing and they're all just like, oh boy, here you go, this uh-huh. is a man with pet pee, here she goes. Um, so I kind of look at them and I kind of crack a little bit of a smile because I see them giggling. Um, and he then said something like, see, there you go. And I look, I know my battery's low, shut up. Um, <laughs> So I then looked at him and said, that was for them, not you. Um, drag him. Yeah, <laughs> drag him to the mind. Um, at this point, I think he walked away and, you know, drank his coffee and then they left or whatever. Um, so this is the Yelp review. There is one young woman here that single-handedly drives away 80% of people away. Okay, this, never, this man had never been in our cafe before, like never before. So I don't know if he was like, I don't know, standing outside for hours with like, uh, like a clipboard, like counting people that seem to storm away angrily. I don't know, you know, she wouldn't smile at me. Oh, I run for the hills. I don't know. Exit polls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't know where he got his statistics from, but drives 80% of people away. It's really a feat. She cannot hide her utter disgust for anything male. The irony is, she wears a flower in her hair. I often wear like flowers and feathers and stuff in my hair. The irony is, she wears a flower in her hair, so the juxtaposition. Oh, 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 oh. I love that I was four. <laughs> and again, I like note the the utter like the hyperbolic language these men are using, right? Yeah. Like psycho. She charging me a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Psycho. She wouldn't let me take money out of her tip jar. Psycho. She came out to me with a knife. Psycho. <laughs> 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 so, the juxtaposition of seething hatred when she slaps down your chain and walks away is nearly filming, which is not a word. 
something out of a That's Jim called. Jarmusch film. I actually don't know any Jim Jarmusch films. So I, I didn't get the reference. Sorry, buddy. You're just trying to sound fucking Dear Diary. Exactly. Don't like pretentious, like movie Unwell British businessmen would pay for this sort of abuse. Oh, Monty Python reference, perhaps? The space is always cold and dirty, but with a couple of small tweaks would be great and would actually take back all of the Starbucks business. It's a shame. The owner seems like a cool guy. I'd hate to see a couple of bad eggs bring down a place. So yeah, so that was, yeah, that was the other one. Why did he meet the owner? He's never been there! <laughs> I mean, there's a chance he might have come in once when like the owner was there or... Bullshit. Maybe, I, call I, bullshit. I call... I, I, I agree. Yeah, I wholeheartedly sure. agree. So that, that was my little, like, don't tell me to smile kind of little anecdote. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Now I should actually probably shut this down because it's screaming at me because it's low on battery. Um, so now that I've rolled up the thing I'm supposed to read off of because I can't help fidgeting. I need one of those fidgy swirly things that all the kids have. Yeah, some kid showed it to me and he was like explaining it to me. Um, and I was, I was like mesmerized. It was the coolest thing ever. So, oh no, okay, Alex, is there anything you want to say before I start the next topic of conversation before you leave? Or are you... Any, um, any burning, anything you'd like to share before Nothing you run that away? wouldn't start like a whole hour long. Okay. Well, we can do a follow up, you know, yeah, whatever. Until next time. This is going to be like five mm -hmm. podcasts in a row, basically. I'm so excited about it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, Thank you yeah. all. Okay. So, this is one of the questions that we were given on our Facebook uh, poll. Um, and this friend of mine, you know, who's, who, you know, he's a nice guy. and. You know, this is a great opportunity for somebody who is receptive to what we have to say and really kind of wants to know. Oh wait, hold on. I have to let her out. Bye. Right, so her. Lock her back in. Sorry guys. Oh, dead air time. Cool. Dead air time. Okay. So. Is it nice and cool? <laughs> our friends. Just don't think about it. Don't think about it. So he writes, um, frustrated. Why is it so taboo for maleness or maleness? Um, as opposed to feminist. I'm all for equality and people of every sexual orientation or gender to be treated like what they are, humans. And he didn't really explain much more than that. So I'm like, all right, well that's, yeah. that's something we can work with. Um, it's actually, I feel like a really great opportunity for us to kind of get into like the whole problem solving kind of element of this. So this is a great opportunity to, to address this kind of like attitude and this kind of, you know, from someone who I think is genuinely receptive to what we have to say. So my response was just, feminism is an all-inclusive term which includes fighting for the rights of those who identify as males to express themselves in any way that is not harmful or restrictive, restricts the rights of others. We are just as against gender norms that limit the choices of, of males as we are against those that limit the choices of, of, of women or you know, however people choose to identify. However, we do not need to recognize, we do need to recognize the extent power imbalance that negatively impacts women to a greater degree. Feminism is about empowering all genders and orientations without compromising anyone's rights. So that was my just kind of off the cuff, like nutshell kind of, here's a sample, um, but now I'd like to just open it up to everyone here. Take it away. So the number one thing I see on social media is men trying to not incite an argument or whatever, but okay. What I'm pretty much trying to say is that the best way to want to educate yourself is to just ask. Don't beat around the bush. Don't try and prove your point as being the good guy. Because by doing that, when you start up a sentence being like, you know, I'm all for this and this and this, you're, you're, I'm automatically thinking less of you because you're trying to prove a point to make me think better of you instead of just asking the question. I would much prefer people just ask the question like why why are like whatever men have questions about in terms of society what do you guys ask i have no clue but um um i think it's just a matter of stop trying to prove your point stop trying to be around the bush just ask the question what ask what you want to ask because i feel like the outcome of people responding to that question would be better if they just said what they wanted to what they, what they generally wanted to ask you know without trying to prove themselves before even asking the question because i'm you're already giving me a chance to form an opinion about you because you're not mansplaining, but you know, it's that back to that thing where it's like, I'm a nice guy, you know, you know, but I get mad when you don't smile, you know, it's like something like bullshit like that. So I think that's just my personal thing that would help me to educate people better without any like, um, any like anger or letting my feelings get in the way of answering that question. So. 
that's that's actually really great. Mm -hmm. What's he what's he worried about there? Does he did, does he feel that that women are trying to bring their bring their status up at the expense at the expense of men? I think that's what that's a lot, a lot of, of men's problem is. is. Yeah. <laughs> men who say, why do we need feminism, why not manism, or whatever or men is. Yes, it's like, all right, look into your life and tell me about how you view women, like how you've seen women being treated. Now, do you think it's the same way you've been treated? Think of every little girl you know growing up and how she was treated compared to you. Is it the exact same? Mm -hmm. No, that's why feminism exists, so we can all be treated the exact same way. Men who think manism needs to exist are ignoring the issues and the plights that women face every day because they just don't think it matters. This is my to them. I was <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Though for, there are exceptions. I mean, of course, because like growing up, obviously parents have boys and girls and correct both of those mm -hmm. genders. And, and I think it just perpetuates, like, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> Um, the fact that we're like supposed to be all on the same level, but like after years and like hundreds and hundreds of years of just systematically being oppressed and like not even having to th these guys not even having to think about what they're doing in their life, they just go about their lives, do everything they want to do, accomplish it maybe. And then like there's this group of women who have to like kind of curtsy around, uh, trying to people please and like. Um, work their way to the top, so it's like, yeah. to, to their dreams, to like things that they want to do. And, yeah. and it's like feminism is an empowering word, not like a self-deprecating word for okay. men. Yeah. And it's like, men feel threatened or they feel like they're, it's like their feelings have to be protected, they really don't. Like, yes. they, yeah. they just, they're just so fragile. I don't get it. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. what, we are actually experiencing with this is um, the fact that yes, there are some men who are not treated well. Um, but in the, our conversation, we all know that is a very small percentage. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I think that is where this question is coming up. Because yes, this may be someone, there are men who deal with women who might oppress them. But the, the, the percentage is so small. See, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's kind of, it, I'm gonna think like what you said. Because from, I, I feel like there's just no way that men can be oppressed in any way, shape, or form. I mean, like, Thinking of it in regards to yes. like um, uh, relationships with people in, mm -hmm. in, in sexual romantic relationships, you know, um, you know, I'm kind of glad that the topic of you know abuse on a male hasn't brought up so much, you know, especially it's been really interesting talking to a lot of my radical friend friends who you know are all like you know understanding of the topic but not so. Um, open to their emotions about it because of women's oppression in this world, that they just kind of are so shut off to the fact that men can also be oppressed. Mm -hmm. Well, not oppressed, and that's the thing. I just, it's, it's hard to word it because... You use well, it's hard to yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, men can be oppressed, but not because they're men. Yes. yes, there we go. Yes, yes. thank you, girl. Thank you, thank you. Like, thank you. Maybe you're poor, yes. or maybe you have a disability, yes. or maybe you are part of the LGBTQ community, yes. but you're not oppressed because you're a man. Thank you. You're not thank intelligent you. woman. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's totally fine. Um, that happens. My, my, just to answer the question of the person, the, yeah. my problem with their statement is the fact that they're using feminism, and feminism is not a thing. Okay. That's just, it's just a rebuttal to feminism, yeah. which, um, they want to include themselves in this, um, like, organization that was not created by them. <laughs> um, egalitarianism, that word, that, why don't we use that word, that was co-opted by French, um, revolutionary groups, and it meant fraternity. Oh, no. So that was... Mm -hmm. Egalitarianism wasn't a, a, a term in the 1920s whenever they started like using feminism that they could have used because it was already co-opted by men. Um, 
and also just like feminism is a problem, but literally the entirety of the world is called mankind, and that's not a problem. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't know. It's, it's, oh it's, it's dissonance, but it's almost not even a dissonance. It's like you know, you like it's like, it's like you know, women are seen. exactly, exactly, yes. and, and you're you're turning the conversation away from that because you want the space to be occupied by you, and that's mansplaining. That's like making the making making it about their problems, and not the fact that that men are like abused in relationships and things like that. Those can be addressed because those are all problems upheld by the patriarchy. You have problems because of the patriarchy. Yes. It's not because of feminism. Yeah, feminism is trying to like make it so that those things don't happen anymore. Exactly. Um, but they're like, what, what is it? Ad adherence? Ad Adversaries? Adversaries? Yeah. Aversions? 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 Their avoidance? Aversions? 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 We're all, when we're little, we're all raised by powerful mama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We literally, oh, sorry. Oh, well, just, I don't know, just in general, women, girls grow up to kind of identify and guys feel like to break away. Yeah. yeah. I agree, because it's almost like, I, I feel, you know, I feel like in my personal life that, um, I agree with you, men are most definitely afraid of women because we're most of us smarter. <laughs> what if they um, all got to but I mean like yeah, I mean like um you know, I feel like because they are afraid of women mentally that they assert their dominance in mm. society with you know physically, you know, because, you know and a and a yeah, and a that's all they have. Exactly friends. exactly, yeah. And I feel like personally to myself that's the only way that I've kind of dealt with men like that in my life and that they assert the dominance physically over me because I always school them mentally. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, and I can also school them physically, but they just don't do so quickly. But, um, Think about the power dynamics would change between men and women if women also had the same muscle mass that men have. Like, oh, oh my gosh, it oh, just yeah. would be totally different. Yeah, it would make me happy. <laughs> if those things weren't like literally morphed by the constructs of our society, like literally just like men like okay this is like very intense because like there's like evolutionary um like uh, damn it what's the word when people think that men are inherently just stronger than women because that's just the way it is yeah. and not because Probably men are literally yeah. yeah morphed by our selectors for like mates and stuff and like yeah. um by two very strong women. Um, I, I had mentioned my, my grandmother um, was a mechanic. She fixed clocks, she fixed snowmobiles, she fixed watches, she fixed everything. She was very mechanical. And then my mother was very medical. And she was very straight up with me in terms of feminism. I didn't know the term back then. She probably didn't either, but that's why she raised me. But when I was in, in college, I always said humanity, mm. humankind. I never, ever used the term mankind. Mm. And then what's written on what your tattoo, I would use those words. Yeah. And there were times where I'm talking about an individual person in, in a paper, OK? And I would, I would not say he or she. And I always got marked down for that. But I didn't care. 
Yeah. You know? Oh, same. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Literally yeah. in college, I said they and my brother, uh, I put yes. marks everywhere. And I was like, yes. yes. Whatever. Kidding. <laughs> this is my paper. These <laughs> are my words. Like, yeah. 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 It's so funny how that happens. Yeah. yeah. That stuff happens, but yeah. And the language is changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is becoming accepted in dictionaries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They is literally a, a I mean, singular. To be, to yeah. be used in right. a singular. Yeah. 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 When I was in school, it was. <laughs> so we might, okay. Uh, we're, the battery's getting low, so she's going to try and see if we can record and plug in at the same time. Good for us, if you mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Sure. Um, just let out every, every kind of derogatory term that is specifically gendered towards a woman like that the word is pretty much significantly or primarily only used against women and was kind of like invented essentially to be derogatory towards women just for like you know the first like 20 or whatever come out of your head pussy slut whore bitch um thought uh thoughtimus prime i've heard um, um uh i'm trying to think of other prostitute prost ho um, chicken head, pigeon, um, you know, I, I feel like women are slut shamed a lot in everything we do and I feel that um, a woman's right to sex and to be sexual is completely empowering, completely depending on the individual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all I can so think now name as many as you can think of that are specific about men and it doesn't count if you've used the word man in front of it. So man slut doesn't count, man whore doesn't count. Because you have, it's basically a word that was invented for women. They just put man in front of it. So, can you think of any? There's literally not one word that comes to my mind. The only thing I can ever think of is like dick. Yeah, or, dick. Uh, you know, but or that's cock. Like, but like, I don't I like. I don't sometimes. like. Yeah. You know, like, I hate using, gen like, uh, like genitalia as an insult. Because right. you know, whatever. I mean, genitalia is it's an obviously an important component to life. It's, what makes it um mm -hmm. so i really you know i hate using but i mean those are the only ones i can think of cock dick that's it yeah, that's but it really doesn't really it doesn't really uh describe a man in a man in a in a, in a sexually derogative way right right yeah there's really not one word that comes to mind that's i know really i know that says something doesn't it it does really say something that you know yeah. there's a lot of finger pointing and yeah. women blaming and god forbid we still got for ourselves so, in any situation all right, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to say the ones you It's going to be so awful. And they're ones that I said for so long, just as like, like, okay, I'll th I hate this word. I don't like it in my mouth. Like, I used to call my friends cons. Like, it was like a funny thing or like, what's up, bitches? Like, it was just something. It was like so complacently in my vocabulary that it wasn't a negative. But like, once you realize how socially ingrained that is, you want to undo it. So I. How do you feel about like people who want to like reclaim the word? Like there's like Good the for them, yeah. yeah. I like mean, the vagina I monologues, they make you yeah. scream cunts, you know, and you know, trying to like make let it empower you because right. cunts are wonderful. Cunts are amazing. We love cunts, you know. Um, <laughs> I think that's cool, but not to put onto someone else. Like do that for you and right, do it right. for the friends of yours who think that's cool, but like it can be, you know, you're you're putting something out there into the public and yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, not everyone wants that, but eh, I don't know. And can you think of any words that are specifically dude-oriented that, like, doesn't make sense? That nope, that, you know, it's, it's, it's gender-specific for men. Calling someone a dick. And that's, like, genital-specific. That's not even actually I know, I know. a man <laughs> thing. But, like, that's the only thing that I can, I guess, like... Yeah. Dick or cock is the only thing I can think of. Yeah. And those aren't, like... They're just like, nicknames dude, you're being for, like... Dick. Yeah. Like, that's not a huge insult that packs a punch. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah. So now I can't think of it. <laughs> That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Let it roll. Right. First the, the mother who cunt. Bitch. Slut. Or uh, all the weird ones like oh my god. What is it? Thought? Like that, that abbreviation. Yeah, that, we, I just heard that. I've never heard that. Before. I've never heard that before. That hoe over there. T H O T. Whoa! <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, it's like. So That's stupid. the dumbest thing I've ever it's heard so in my stupid. life. I've never heard millennials. Uh, you millennials. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, 
I'm trying. I'm trying to blank here. Well, obviously, <laughs> practice these words That's a good enough. thing. <laughs> What, you don't go around slut shaming all the time? Is that what you yes, do? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, so can you, off the top of your head, any uh, that are specifically male? Man whore? <laughs> no, it doesn't count if you have to put a man in front of you. It doesn't count. <laughs> um, there's like, there's like fuck boy. Oh, Seems I Seems to be the I only know. kind of like, gets to the gist. It's, it's, a, like, really ver- it's a very good versatile and, you know, yeah. concise <laughs> words gets right to the point. <laughs> then just douchebag. But is that because a douche is That's, something a woman uses? I know, but it's so, so it's very, I think the kind of But is it is really? But is it, okay. It's, that one's, it's, it's gray. It's gray. It is definitely gray. And some, I've, I've, sometimes, every once in a while, there's a woman who's like, you know, she's a douchebag. But if, yeah, no, we're in the middle of filming a podcast. You want to be interviewed about feminism? <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thank you. But yeah, that, that's great. Obvious ones, bitch, cunt, slut, for. Although I suppose slut can be for both male and female. It doesn't count if you have to put the word man in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I guess also, uh, hmm, what other, um, or pussy, of course, that's the obvious one, the obvious one, I guess. Um, it's kind of strange how genitals are a target of like, um, you know, something negative like that, but it's, I don't know, let's see. That's the um, third time somebody's brought that up. <laughs> I think that's all that I can think of. Top I mean, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go around slut shaming, you know, that'll give you a versatile vocabulary to work with. Um, uh, so can you think of any for just, you know, males? Yeah, um... I mean, I guess, I guess dick, but people kind of call, people kind of call everyone dicks when you think about it. But I guess it is something that is targeted towards males as, like, specifically in that way. But, um, so you said if, so like, man whore doesn't count. No, if you have to put the word man in front of it, because gotcha. the word itself was yeah. invented toward, to be derogatory toward towards women. Yeah. It's just in like recent years that we decided to just put man in front of it. Yeah. And then, then it then it can be used against, but it, that doesn't count. Um, because that's just being modified. It wasn't like yeah. invented for specific emails. It's just been modified for use against. Emails. Yeah, I guess the thing is too like, even when a, a guy is doing something bad, even in a way they're still like might be like they might be said as being tough if they like rape someone or something like that. It's a very masculine like yeah. thing. So even if I feel like there aren't a lot of drug or right for it's like just for men. Because it's acceptable for men to behave in those yeah. ways, but not for women. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what we've been finding. <laughs> it says a lot when there, the our society and our, well, I should say our, our language has all of these terms uh, yeah. to, to hurl at women, um, to judge their behavior, but like hardly any specifically about men. Cool. Well, thanks for uh, participating. Yeah. I'm glad that we just pulled you randomly off the street. <laughs> we have food over there if you're hungry. Oh, that's awesome. I uh, am. Free food hungry. every Wednesday. <laughs> Pussy, poor slut, cunt, uh, oh man, I mean, we know you don't go around like slut shaming all the time, so it's, it's yeah, okay. it's kind of not my thing, um, yeah. <laughs> cavernous twat is a good one, whoa, oh, we didn't have twat yet, interesting, yeah. okay, cavernous twat, cavernous twat, um, Let's see, hot dog as a, a As a pe- opposed to a compact twat? Yes. Oh, it's, okay. You know, like the whole idea that tighter is better. Oh. Right. You know, that. And if you're, if it's wider, you're slutty. See, you've you gotten some mileage in. Um, and I guess that's all I can think of. Because again, don't really go around slut shaming. Yes. You know? Fair point. <laughs> uh, um, feminazi. Oh, yeah. Feminazi is oh, one yeah. that I. Okay, Coming so from a now, conservative household, that, oh, that was a big one. Oh, yeah. Uh, welfare queen. Yeah, you never hear about welfare kings. Yeah. That's a really, I never thought of that welfare in my entire queen. life. Mm. Welfare queen. Wow. I'm trying to think of all the terms, because Rush Limbaugh was on in my house when I was a kid, like all the time, so I heard all of the, all of the <laughs> Wow. Uh, that's, yeah, that's all I could think of off the top of my head. Jeez.
Okay. Um, so, dudes. Now do ones for dudes. I guess dickhead, dick, prick. Um, yeah, they're all very penis oriented. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> uh, bastard. That's not specifically to men. Bastard is someone who is born out of wedlock. Yes, but mm -hmm. when you think, I'm just saying. Right, yeah. no, it's used often about men, but it's not oh, gender yeah. specific. Yeah. yeah, so that one's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, right? Long list for females. Straight list. I mean, on. unless you start talking about the British term for cigarettes. But that's are... not, you know. I mean, yes, I guess that is. Yeah. That is. That it is. That's true. That's true. It is. It is specifically about uh, um, um, oh, I've been man's called, sexual behavior. I mean, no, so I don't like, think I, it is I've though. Been called a fag before. No, I don't oh, think it okay. is. Okay. I think women I, can be called. I, yeah. It's not as often, but I have been called a fag before. Okay. Okay, yeah. then there you go. In a derogatory manner. Interesting. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Well, yay! <laughs> or, I mean, yay I'm for sorry, I was like... Oh, wait, your opinion is on them because of the very first stanza that they wrote in your goddamn paragraph yeah. on Facebook. So it's like... I'm so glad you called that out. I'm so glad you called that out. I see um, all the time, I'm just like... You, I already don't want to listen to you. I, yeah. like, I already don't want to listen to you. Sorry, if you're like... Okay. If you're just like... I, I just okay. don't... Okay, so we're on. Okay, I don't know how much of that was on camera. You're so sneaky. Keep it off. I just wanted, I, I was trying to tell you that we could do it. Oh, I almost fucked in, but then I was like, I heard you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, all right. So, Steph, just to like touch on what you said about like men wanting to like include themselves and kind of like instead of realizing that, well, first they misunderstand what feminism is, which is why they feel they need to rebut it because really what they're trying to do is include themselves into something. And they're failing to understand what feminism is and failing to realize that they're already included in it. Like, we're, feminists are already looking out for everyone. Like, we want to make sure that, like, everybody is safe and everybody is comfortable to express who they are and that everybody's rights are protected and that, like, and that nobody's, like, stomping on women, but also, like, you know, understanding that, like, the, like you have to, as you said, like, the patriarchy is negatively impacting males as well as females, as well as, like, again, we, you know, there's not just two genders, there's like a, just like a million. Yeah. Okay, I saw I slightly exaggerated. <laughs> what about women that don't want to be called feminists? Uh, um, I think those are also, box. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that needs to be unwrapped. That's a whole other box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it, like, like we talked about before we even started, it piggybacks off of, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yes. women, you know, women, people who identify women, um, wanting to, you know, be included in the male society because they probably feel like they're not included in their own, you know, mm -hmm. female body society. Um, well, like, I don't know, a lot of women don't want to become victims and see women as yeah. victims, so they uh, want to isolate themselves from it. Yeah. And that's protection. what they, yeah, mm -hmm. which is really terrible so in itself. I, when I, I, I got, um, I was a few minutes late because I took the bus from my house to where you guys were. Um, but this woman got on the bus right after me, and I've known her forever. I've known her, I'm friends with her daughter, and, and she, um, she was like, oh my god, this thing just happened. And what had just happened was, she saw a woman, like, very well dressed, like, coiffed, you know, and she said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she, so she, she said that, th this is a woman that I know, she said this, she felt like this woman clearly wanted to be looked at, okay? And she, so, and so my friend said, she said, I, I said, and I, she said I looked at her, but she looked back at me as in, how dare you look at me? And I was like, what? And it's like, you know, it, it's in, right, yes. And, and, and my friend is an older woman, gray hair, um, very tall, wears jeans. Like, she, she does not dress up. But, but this other woman looked at her as if she was not good enough. 
to, to even admire her. That happened literally today at my job today. There was a white woman in line, and there was a lovely, lovely black woman who was, not to say the white woman was lovely, I mean, I mean, lovely, <laughs> but okay, she was um, giving me like a, a flyer for this like free music, like classes for like kids of all ages, like it was in Clinton, yeah, it was really like fun. And I was like, it's really sweet, of course, take a flyer. And you know, they're both in line, you know, one woman and then the other woman trying to give, like trying to talk to the lady, like, hey, would you like a flyer? Like, do you have any kids? Like, do you know any kids? Like, and the way that this other lady was like, like so like again, like not wanting to even like look or interact with this woman i was just like this is happening right now like am i really witnessing this right now like why the animosity this is just a person trying to kickstart this program that they're obviously so passionate about and you see the you, she was radiating happiness about talking to me about this you know right. and to just be a complete asshole and shut her out like that because of what reason i have no fucking clue right you know this reason. is a uh, grind no reason <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> right uh, i don't damn know what yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i don't know the reason but it's just like you know i see i'm ranting but i'm just upset you know i uh, I've encountered so many. Um, it's also it's it's also within myself that I have to keep it in check. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of weird um, resentment against uh, not against but towards uh, like specifically middle aged white women because they will preach to the mountain how how woke they are and how you know progressive they're being and then one moment one moment treat someone like mm -hmm. that yeah that yeah way. we'll go for Trump. This is a customer that I talked oh, to before, right? Yeah. And that did. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I had something similar actually happen to me. Um, I take I take after my grandmother. I'm very proud of it. I work on cars. I do all of this stuff. So one day I was working on my car. And I went over to my Carl Weldon and Jason when they lived oh, on Tree Street. Weldon. Yeah, yeah, Love he's it. he's a good Everyone friend. Knows so I went over to their house, like where they lived, which was very close to where I was working on my car, to borrow something while I'm working on my car. And I'm wearing like overall y stuff, and this couple walked by me, and the woman clung to the man when she saw me, and. And as as they're walking, I said, "Hi, how are you?" I mean, it's new. You know, you say hello to everybody in New Paltz. You say hello to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So I said, "Hello, how are you doing?" And as she's pulling, he says, "Dirty freak." <gasps> what? And I'm like, I go to my car and I look in my mirror. <laughs> like, <laughs> mirror, mirror like, what? Having my teeth. I, I had grease on my face from working on my car. Say, I'm deputy mayor of Newpaltz. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> was like, because I had grease on my face from working on my car. I think people don't know anything. They don't even know what to worry about. Exactly. They, just want, well, they want something to worry about because it's the norm. Yeah. To just yeah. be yeah. constantly angry and just to worry about shit. So anyway. Yeah. Um, so I just want to sneak in this one other question that was posted um, by someone on Facebook um, so we can get to that. Uh, which doesn't have to be in well, as long as you guys don't make it. Or you folks. Oh, God, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay, I do it all the time. Do, you folks, like, y'all folks. Um, yeah. So, what are good, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because we're, we are ranting, mm -hmm. but you know, <laughs> and I rant too, and man, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I hate men, and I don't mean that. Like, I, I, like, I have, you know, our last podcast was literally all guys, guy, yeah, all guys, I can say that. <laughs> It was all guys. You were there too. Yeah, and I was there too. I was, you know, I was, you know the, and, and there was another person whose project I was representing who couldn't be there, so it would have been another woman there. But um, part of the reason I decided to make this one feminism, like, okay, we need a little woman up in this podcast because the other woman's all there. Oh, uh, well, yeah, no, but you were hiding. I couldn't talk. Because you refused to be on camera. Oh, she couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't talk. Sorry, just kidding. I don't like being on camera. Because I have to look at. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> so, um,. You know, I, I, I love men. And you know, the men who were here at that last podcast are, are our allies, like they're our accomplices. They're the type of men who are gonna call out another male, you know, being sexist. Like, you know, so, and we need to definitely create more of those. Um, and, you know, and, you know, and, and Shanique, 
whatever your feelings are. I'm just representing myself and no. my own feelings. And I'm really glad that you I'm really... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, fuck boys. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. boys. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Right? 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 Yeah. And, you know, there are men that incredibly frustrate me. And then there's men who I absolutely adore and love, you know. And, again, it's based on their behavior. Yes. Um, uh, you know, so just... Because, again, you know, we do want to educate people and, again, make accomplices and allies and not enemies. Um, but now, just to shift gears a little bit as we kind of conclude, because our battery's running out, uh, and our batteries are running out. <laughs> um, but I want to make sure we address this other pers person's question. Um, what are good strategies to combat internal misogyny? And I would say, just to, not to like completely change this person's question, but like, you know, internal misogyny, and I know this person did not mean it this way, but almost sounds like there's misogyny within us. And obviously what they're talking about is external misogyny that has been internalized. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. So girls who say things like, he is acting like a girl, you know, as if a girl is a ne that's a negative thing. Oh, or slut shaming other time. women. Yeah. yeah. Or this is why I don't hang out with other girls. It's like, you know, another thing I've also, never, I've also heard. This person was like, I just recently had to move back to Long Island, and these are things that I'm overhearing on a regular yes. basis, like daily, and I'm like, I'm gonna lose my mind. Yeah. Um, so, and she was like, I have tons of like great responses to this too, but I would love to open, you know, hear, hear other people's responses about this. Um, so if you wanna just kinda. You know, it's interesting. Um, she's a good friend of mine. And she recently lost her partner, who's a man. But um, most people have, have identified her as lesbian. And um, she's back on Long Island. She's working at a place. And one thing that made her really happy is that um, the, the coworkers that she has, she works in the kitchen. and. The, there's Mexican co-workers and they will speak to her in Spanish and they will say um, tennis unovia like do you have a girlfriend and it makes her happy that people look at her and kind of wonder you know and it is them wondering you know do you sleep with men or do you sleep with women is basically the whole thing and she finds it funny that her recent love of her life was a man, where she's always been with women. But yeah, so it's, it's kind of a interesting, but that's also the, you know, why do you only hang out, why don't you hang out with more girls? That's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's, you hang out with people. Yeah. You hang out with people that you like. And I love that response, like I don't hang out with girls or boys, I hang out with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Generally, the responses that I get, because I just, anyone who knows me or if I'm around me in public, especially, or around cisgender people, like, have heard me call out that stuff. But, like, I, the thing that I call out, I, I do it in a way, it's kind of a form of manipulation. And it's kind of like, I, I kind of ask, you know, when they're like, oh, be a little bitch, be a little girl. I'm like, so do you think all, do you think girls are bitches? Do you think girls aren't strong? And it's usually silent. Or it's, you know, stuttering because they usually don't know what to say. So I'm just like, okay, how can I better both, like, ask your honest, genuine, like, you know, opinion about, you know, what you just said and also educate you at the same time? Because, like, obviously you're not going to realize that what you just said is fucked up. You're just going to be in your own feelings and be like, well, why did, why did they call me out? Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like... I don't know what point I'm trying to make, but pretty much that's just the response that I've gotten. And it's just like nothing. Question marks and not knowing what to say. So And and with you, it's it's like your 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 the way you identify is so like it's so largely in, involved in that entire situation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, and my my son has only been with men in his life. And he recently is with a woman who also identifies. And she, she's an actress, and she did a play. I met her mom the one night. The next night her dad was coming. And she was so afraid because she felt with her identification, she was coming out to her dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking at her, and I didn't even say it. 
because I'm thinking to myself, he's not going to know what the fuck you're talking not about. Not at all, yeah. You know, it's like, calm down. And, but I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's like, it's your, 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 your stressed over exactly. this, you know. And he's not going to know what, you know. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm all right. I Sorry. I don't want to change the topic, and I just wanted to add this thing in before we got out of battery, and then go right back to this. But, um, so I, I almost forgot about this, but I'm uh, just a committee I'm on. I'm on many committees. I'm trying not to be giving too much personal it's okay. information. It's, it seems like it's cool. charging and recording. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Huzzah! Good, we can be here so all night. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I have to farm in the morning. I have to drive a tractor straight tomorrow morning. Um, just, it'll just, it could be natural. Just yeah. Be straight? Natural. Or gaily forward. You know, whatever, whoever's driving it, whatever, however they would like to drive it. <laughs> or, is, you know, their choice. Their choice. Um, so, I'm on a committee and the, we were just doing some emails deciding about like whether or not we want to have a meeting before this other particular thing. And it's, you know, it's for the, the town and um, one of the, the, one of the males. It's, it's a pretty balanced, it's right, well, it's not balanced because right now it's, there's, there's only white people on it, which is something I try to work on. Which is something I was actually going to talk to you about. Oh. <laughs> now I've got you on camera. Uh, if you're interested, if you're not interested, you know, whatever. I just, it's, it's a little, it's, <laughs> it's, it's getting, it's a little blinded by the white right now. Um, can so, I say something? Yes. I just want to add how incredibly diverse Meepals is getting. Have you noticed it? Have you noticed it? Yes. Not yes. Have you noticed it? Last week we get the yes. day floor, so I was like, yes. Yes. Oh, oh my god. No. Well, I work at a oh health my god. store where it's predominant 98% white people and like a, like a pinch of black. Okay, I And then there's some town. Asian, but like everyone loves it. Which is why it's even more important we get somebody, a person of color on this committee so it's not all just white. I'm like, I'm the least right, white person there, and I'm pretty right. fucking white. Yeah. So, um, so I'm right. I mean, I'm and a little home. orange it's right like now, but... Like, it's like just me and my family in this right. town, like, not see black rivers for weeks. And then, like, oh my god, it's you, that you happens. see me. I know, right? Are you real? <laughs> oh my god, are you in your Are you, you really oh, here? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. I'm gonna throw this in real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when we moved to New Paltz, I, I moved there for the school system for my son, who was three. Because we lived in a not-so-great school district when he was born. So. Um, he's a quarter black, and he grew up around all of our neighbors were black. A lot I of no southern. <laughs> See, I know your son. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 right, right, yes, yes, right. So he's a quarter black. He's his his first real babysitter um, was black, southern black. Her grandchildren were always there. We moved to New Paltz. His first friend is black. And they're the only two kids in the preschool that have any color, <laughs> right? Yeah, no. So, so, and I'm thinking, like, after the fact, I'm thinking to myself, okay, he grew up until three years old, mostly around black kids, and then he gets to this preschool, and he sees this little boy, and they're like, that. Mm -hmm. They were separated <laughs> because yeah, they were put into different classrooms because when the, between the two of them, they thought that they caused trouble. Right. No. So they always be doing oh. Oh. Three, yes, do that. three years old. No, that's the thing that happens. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And and it, a lot of these things, but you know, I, I was pretty darn social conscious, but some of these things didn't occur to me right away. You know. And, and, and also just the fact that he and Rudy, he navigated to Rudy, you know, that was like, oh, one of my peeps, you know Aww. what I'm saying? But it was just like, yeah. Aww. Yeah, but they got super good. That's terrible. Bullshit. Yeah. That is bullshit. So, yeah. we we're, ha sorry. I have like ADD, so I have to really so stop myself from interrupting people, because like, yeah, I'm terrible. Oh, no, so I, I, I um, love too much. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're, we're talking about this email, and this person said a comment like, well, our town fathers, we should find out what our town fathers have to say, meaning I, meaning the town board, and I think it's some kind of a reference to forefathers. Oh, God. So so my response was like, okay, it sounds good, but, you know, could we possibly avoid language like town fathers, considering that one of our town board members is a woman, and so is half this council? You know, and I was trying to be like, you know, positive, can we just, you know, avoid language like that? You know, just remember... You know, and, and and I was waiting for a response, and I didn't get one yet, so hopefully mm -hmm. they just kind of like, they're like, okay, all right, just kidding, we'll be careful, hopefully. 
because I was waiting for a response, and my response to that was probably going to be something like, yes, I understand that's probably a reference to our forefathers, but let's remember that our forefathers are the forefathers because women had no ability to hold office, let alone even vote at that time, so there could not have been any foremothers because you weren't allowing them to be part of that process. Mm -hmm. Except, you know, you're talking to your wife over coffee in the morning or oh, whatever. Oh, but that wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was my little yeah. proud moment of the week where I'm like, oh, good, this is good prep prep for uh, the podcast this, this coming week. It's just like, just that little, like, hey, I know, you know, you meant no offense and blah, 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 but, like, be aware. Like, you are using the term fathers to talk about people, like, like come on, 2017. 2017. Sorry. Anyway, I'm sorry. I want to do a plug right now. The Huguenot Street and her story, everyone should go check it out. It is a Huguenot Street special they have right now where they are telling the stories of the founding ladies, yes. women of New Paws. How long is it going on? I don't um, know when it's going to be the end finished. of the summer. Oh, perfect. Yes, and it's not just white women. It is native women. It is black women. It is just a comprehensive history of the women. Not a comprehensive history because, you know, the records don't really exist, but women who lived yeah. in New Paws who wrote diaries and they're telling their stories. Can you oh, I did the voice, oh, actually, of Sarah, one of the former, one of the slaves, uh, oh, actually. Nice. So if you do it, it's actually an audio tour. And you can go and check it Where? out. Where? Okay. Hey, Street. Ah. Yeah. Can you send me the information? Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you a link. Yeah, send me a link. And also, oh yeah, I guess if I have the link, well, I can post on the back. Right? Right? As she yeah. says this, we could like have a little <laughs> beep leep leep underneath. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to do a beep leep leep? I will do a beep leep leep. Is that a technical? As I'm saying this, like in the video, I'll do a beep leep leep. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> cool. Did anyone, because I know I totally kind of changed the subject because I'm, I'm, I'm a jerk. But did, no, not you, me, I did it. Does anybody else want to add anything in response to the question about, like, you know, women's behavior towards other women, in, like the, the internalized misogyny thing? I think women need to, it's not, we have to recognize that misogyny, misogyny is a part of society. We have to start off looking at other women not tear women down, not call them out because they're dressing less feminine or something. Just like, don't do that. You know it's wrong. Like, think yeah. about how or you dressing want to be treated. Too fem or dressing too, too feminine. Sexy Stop sexualizing or women. Like sluts or something. Like, like, Stop calling girls sluts. Like, yeah, no, like, slut. Everyone likes sex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I can't even begin yeah. to tell you how many I, I'm like talking yes. about ghosts, but like, um, I just grew up with like a, a best friend and their family just when they wa would watch TV, they would just like always be judging all the women on the TV. And I was like, they were all really thin and I was not. And they would be telling me that all the girls on the TV were like too fat or too like slutty or too whatever. And I would just be sitting there like, do you not know that I'm like not thin? Like like the girl on the TV is like wow. thinner than me and you're like telling me that that girl's fat. Like, like it was just like such a weird thing to be like, sitting in and like right. they would be it was such a it, weird if she's environment not, what am I? yeah what am i and i'm sitting right next to you and like it, it, they were always telling me that like having uh, that having female friends is terrible and like i just yeah. surrounding myself with that was so weird and it took me a long time to realize that it was like, such a negative environment yeah. mm -hmm. and that's it yes. was long island that's why I'm thinking of this because yeah, I'm Long like Island. Long Island it breeds this horrible like negativity towards women and I don't know what it is. There's it was like that in there. too and actually a friend of mine when she was going to Albany University or Albany, SUNY Albany, mm -hmm. um, our, you know Nikki, 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 why am I blanking on her last name right now? Nicola? Nicola? Um, is she a massage therapist? No, no. So I think she's, she's finished up <coughs> for social order. Anyway, um, sorry, wrong, wrong Nikki. Um, but she uh, was complaining about that when she first went to Albany, and like, like women were coming up to her and being like, "Oh, we're so glad you're like normal." Uh, and she was like, that, "Oh, you do not know me, and you do not know where I'm from." Um, but yeah, true. and then like, yes. you know, having like men come up and slap them on the ass, and they'd be oh like, "What? God. It's a compliment," you know? And like, and she was like, and. and yeah, it was very, very hard for her. Kind of a culture shock after growing up in New Paltz, you know. But I mean, I grew up in Binghamton where that's actually pretty common, so. Whoa. Yeah. Do men actually touch people's asses? I, in Asheville, some yeah, guy came up girl. in the bar and slapped my ass, and I grabbed him and I slapped him in the face. 
good. And then the entire bar just kept buying me drinks when I got paid. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 but it happens. Like it actually happens. You know, we yeah, could we use that. We that. could pay a dude friend of ours to come in. Slap us on the ass, and we can slap them in the face, and then everybody will buy us free drinks. <laughs> so now we all know. They all know about your idea, they have more. Oh, oh shoot. shit. I call, I'll cut it out. <laughs> I'm the editor. So, yeah, so back to the topic. Are you ready? Oh. Are you? I oh, no, I'm oh. to. Yeah. yeah, well, we can, we can, we can end oh, yeah, this. It was just, time. like, the, um, internal misogyny thing. It's it's really sad. I just find it incredibly sad that that women hate each other. And I, I grew up with this idea that we should be hating each other. Yeah. Awesome. And like finding that like uh, in New Paltz is where I found love for women. I had oh, close so women friends, but New Paltz. So odd to me. I I I thought I lived maybe maybe it was just a blip <laughs> mm-hmm. of um, women being really supportive of each other and not competitive. And it may be something to do with women going into, going to work and, and feeling more independent and not like they had to compete for men and before they realize that they can't do it all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when they thought that they didn't need to compete for men, maybe they were more supportive of each other. I don't know. Yes. It may just be anecdotal. It may just be the women. No, I think it's a real thing. When women have more in their lives, and not had to mean that. When women have aspirations, careers, jobs, future look for that doesn't involve a man or a child, then they support each other because you're not competing for that man, you're competing for the job, but you want to support other women getting the job because hey, girls in the position. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was gonna say maybe just like stop watching those shows. That yeah, that's what it for me. Yeah. I, when I was on Long Island, that's literally yeah. all we did was watch TV. Just like, or even, you do. just like even news in general, or just like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of important to keep up to date with whatever, but. There's other ways. There's other yeah, ways just look around you. There's love everywhere. It's like, everyone's just looking for something. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think was what, what, what Margaret was saying, when women started entering the workforce more and more, there came the, the, what, the glass ceiling. Okay, that's when I think women started realizing that men are making so much more per hour for doing the same work. And I think I that always knew that. Right, exactly. But I think <laughs> that led, you know, somewhat to, you know, this understanding of, of being together, of supporting mm-hmm. each other. You have to run away, right? You're like getting ready to run away, or no? Kind of. Been. If we're wrapping okay. up, I'll stay. I just want to make sure. Well, I mean, yeah. you do whatever you you can. Yeah. You would like to. I just want to make sure that if there's anything else you want to put in before you have to run away, that you have the opportunity. Oh, I know. Oh, at least you're not yet. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, but if at any point, if you do really need to leave and you yeah. want to just interject something, yeah. I'm sure we'll all be yeah. fine with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, now I've pulled your real conversation. No, no one knows what's what happening. <laughs> um. Well, I guess I should open that to everybody. Does anybody have any anything else that they want to add or they want to make sure they get in? We will, we can definitely follow up and maybe even do like other little interviews in case like you wake up at like three in the morning and you're like, oh, I should have said blah, blah, blah. You know, we could we could do that and we can set up, you know, little like little talking head little segments that we can kind of mm-hmm. in, in, stick in or whatever. We'll, we'll leave it to our fabulous audio vision of audio vision of work. Okay, it is shutting Audio down. Visionary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Audio visual engineer. <laughs> um, to you know, make it all fancy. Um, but yeah. So whatever. If anybody has any. Stop sexualizing women. Yes. Female bodied people. Stop touching my goddamn body. <laughs> oh my god! Please stop touching me. Like it's hot. I have short shorts. I have short yes. I will god. fight back. <laughs> exactly. Just in general, stop fucking touching people. Just stop touching people. Just people in general. Like, yeah. Like, when, you can give me a hug. Just don't like. Not even. Don't slide give me a down. Hug. I mean, like if I want the hug. Exactly. Yeah. Ask yeah. for a hug. Yeah. 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 Just like the gaze. Like just stop looking at me like yes. that. Like just stop. Yeah. Let me come out. Mm-hmm. It, I know that you're looking I at me. Picture me naked. Like, yeah. 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 Just just like, the, the first time. I, <laughs> well, it it fortunately has really not happened. Um, 
but when I was in high school, I worked at a at a movie theater, and I and at this one point, I was working behind the counter, and this guy who I'm still friends with now, probably because I did this, he came up to the counter and ordered something like maybe a soda, and he reached over and touched my breast. Wow. Yes. In high school, I took the soda and threw it in his face. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, yeah. So meanwhile, like I said, someone touched me recently in the last couple months and I just looked at him and said, why are you touching me? Yeah. And it, it never really happens to me because I don't allow it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, dude, don't even look at me like that. Yeah. It's just Jesus. But yeah. So first time high school and mm -hmm. done. done. And that's something that we should definitely, I'm glad that you, that we're kind of emphasizing this because women need to know that that's okay. Yes. If someone touches you and you don't want to be Smack touched them. and they don't permission to touch you, yes. you can hit them. You unless it's like them. your mother preventing you from being like hit by a car or your dad like, you know, grabbing you out of the way of a baseball flying at your face or, you know, something else that's appropriate. Like nobody has the right to touch you without permission. And it's okay for you to react angrily and firmly and be like, do not touch me. And that's okay. You're not a bitch. You're not an angry feminine Nazi. You're not any of these fucking things that they like to hurl at us to put us back into some fucking subordination. Like, no. You get to be like, hey, don't touch me. Like, and that's okay. It's okay. And the more women who do this, the less guys are going to think they can just oh touch you. Uh -huh. Or they anybody who thinks they can just touch no, anybody. <laughs> Get with Will it. Just like this whole thing that I, I'm glad is getting called out where like because like when, when people have like transgender guests on things and shows and they decide that well you're transgender so it's okay that we just ask really personal things about <laughs> oh, your yeah, gender, right? Your like no, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you I'm transgender. Do you ask, you know, President whoever about yeah, their I'm penis like, and which way it hangs? Like no. <laughs> like just because a person's are talking about their gender yeah. doesn't mean they're talking, they're t expressing to you yeah. what's going on on their pants or their skirts or whatever they're wearing, like jumpers, I don't know, or this, oh god, got hold, what are those, the rompers, the romper I controversy? Oh, the, ma the male rompers. I, I just fucking rompers. At four in the romper. morning, as I was wrapping up an event in New Paltz, I ran in, this man is ranting and raving to his friends about like how men cannot wear rompers, but he admitted his gay brother was allowed to wear rompers, but straight men were not, I know. What's and I was like, so it's, it's like a it's one a piece. Of, yeah. What, it's a jumpsuit. And I said, yeah. I said, why are yeah. you so upset? I'm like, is anybody making you wear a romper? Well, no. Oh, because he asked. He specifically asked me, like, yo, you know, you know, don't, don't ever date a guy in a romper. I'm like, okay, well, a, don't tell me who I can date and what my date can wear. A, b, is anybody forcing you to wear a romper? No. Okay. Don't wear one. Is somebody else wearing a romper hurting you in any way? <laughs> so why are you screaming and wasting energy and, and time and breath and all of these things? And why are you like stressing yourself out and giving yourself a heart attack? Because someone you haven't even probably never even met or seen is possibly wearing a romper. Like, really? Like, do you not have better things to be angry about? No. You know, one thing that I have happened to me a lot is people legitimately not understand a lot of the sexuality things and I get asked a lot of questions about trans well what what about this what about that and and I'll answer you know from what I know and sometimes they're just so puzzled but I'm happy that they're asking the questions mm -hmm. because they really want to understand because they know so I well that goes back to what you're um, saying like asking questions is good mm -hmm. but like Making sure that you're asking the question not to show what a cool person you are yeah. or yes. how tall yeah. oh, you are, absolutely. but yeah. genuinely asking the question because you don't, you don't know, know and mm -hmm. you want to know because you're trying to be better and you're trying to understand that's where you're, that your intention, mm -hmm. and not ask them about their genitalia. It's just pretty much it's always so off the book. Like yeah, they're off the. You just can't do that. You just don't ask people about their body parts unless they want to tell you about their body parts. <laughs> I, I was think, I don't want to leave you guys hot without a fan. Oh. <laughs> 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 I 
think we're, we're done. Like, Does yeah. anybody else have anything they want to say? Talking about our body parts is literally yeah, so hot. Yeah, speaking of like, so take that Did we answer that question? What was the question? I think so. I think I'm, so. I think I don't know. I mean, like, never. Not always yeah, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> about solving all the world's problems tonight as yeah. much as just, like, getting the seeds planted, given, mm-hmm. getting the conversation. Maybe somebody will watch this, and that will lead to them having a conversation. Yes. And that's really what this, the purpose is. is it, we, we weren't expecting to, like, solve this problem tonight. I mean, hey, that would have been cool and all, but, like, you know, there's a whole planet, and we're like... I, 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 I honestly don't, I don't know. I don't that problem. Honestly, I time. cannot, I'm honestly so glad someone else said it because I do not want to be that like, <laughs> like, like, uh, unoptimistic person to think it, but I feel it so deep down in my soul that I've just gone through so many trials and tribulations mm-hmm. with dealing with people yeah. who just don't open up their mind, they're, they're closed minded. It's yeah. just like, and nothing's going to stop that except for them. Well, and I even feel it inside me that I don't think I've let go of this like internalized misogyny, like it's in me. Like, where I'm doing it to myself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I still fight about, you know, body body image issues. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially since, I mean, since, like, high school, all these years. Where I'm, like, I'll go into a store. Yeah. I look like this, and then I'm, like, why the fuck do I care? Right, (laughs) right, exactly. And, like, who, you know, it's, we're all still struggling with this. And I still struggle with, and it's like, okay, so now I'm ashamed of my body shame. And I'm ashamed yeah. for feeling ashamed about, like, you know, it's just like, it's just like never ending. And, and it, I've come so far, definitely, in like being okay with who I am and how I look and all of these things. But like, it was, it's a battle. It is a fight just to like not hate things about yourself that yes. are so stupid to hate about yourself. But it is like this huge, it's a huge thing. Sorry. I'm just saying that, you know, the thing about it gets better. Well, this is another thing that gets better. You get old, you don't give a rat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think you're, I mean, it's when, when it comes to people that we just know or not, because, like, you know, I've been doing activism, and, you know, whether you're trying to get somebody to sign some petition about saving a tree or the environment or whatever it is, like, there's just certain people that are pointing, like, okay, I'm not getting anywhere with you, and I never will, and you have to walk away and you have to save your energy. And we have to focus on those people that we do feel are coming from a genuine place, who we do feel are really going to actually be open and listen to what we have to say, and even if they may not agree right away. And we're just planting that seed and giving them something that they, they are going to think about. You know, like you know, when you when that person when that when that dude came back to like re apologize and like touched you in the small of your back, that's like okay, well now you have to apologize like eight more times. You just <laughs> totally <laughs> negated the previous apologies, but like the fact that you. Re- the way that you did is like that person's gonna think a little bit mm-hmm. before they do that yeah. again. Yes. You know, and even if we're yes. not changing their mind, we're at least in the meantime altering their behavior, that's a victory. You know, so like we kinda have to focus on that because the the bigger picture is, although we keep it in mind, it is extremely daunting and overwhelming and can be it can be all be very demor- demoralizing. I almost put an extra letter in that word. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, and just trying to focus on the people that we know are going to be open and just you know, do the best we can. I think I used President Trump as an example before, right? I'm like, I don't you know, know President well, yeah, we can't like have to sit down and have a conversation with, oh yeah, you're right, fair enough. That, you know, yeah. orange face, with loop of face, you know, whatever. Hashido. 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 And like say all the right things, and all of them, he's like, you know, I regret every pussy I've grabbed <laughs> without permission, and I, you know, it's not gonna happen. That guy's never gonna change. I think it would be good for him to get a good whack though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Carol, this is on camera. We don't want you taking away a large <laughs> white van. Oh, yeah. yeah, on YouTube. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, oh, no. No, it's okay. I'm sure you'll be fine. I'll protect you. We live, we live yeah. in the same house, so. Yeah. It's your boy. Yeah, I'll go chasing that van with him. That. <laughs> With flat tires. There you go. Oh gosh, we're just getting deeper. No. Yeah, right. Cool. All right. Is there anything else that it can nope. Okay, I think we're good. Right. Okay. Yeah. Motion to do adjourn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gavel. Oh, believe me, got the gavel out of the trash. <laughs> this has been Catalyst, a de facto community center project production. Much love and thanks to our guest speakers and participants. Contact us at mpzdefactoproject@gmail.com. at gmail.com. For more info and updates, join our Facebook group, NPZ De Facto Community Center Project.
To donate, go to gofund.me slash hmtg6g.